The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We are going to take a look at some of the market things that the old uh, cowboy from Arizona is going to be looking at. I'm about as close to a cowboy as Raquel Welch is to a plumber, so I really don't like to ride horses <laughs> or shoot people or anything else, brand cattle, none of that stuff, but because I live in Arizona, everybody thinks it's cowboy country, but... Uh, Anyway, we'll go from one thing to another here. I posted the chart for the DAX. Uh, let's let's go through these folks because they all look alike, and it's going to be really interesting here to see what happens this week. You'll notice the DAX has made a really nice Gartley uh, up in this area. If we post the next one, which is the U.S. market, which is the FTSE, you'll see that it's also made a perfect Gartley up there. Again, exactly at the 61% retracement, and then it's uh, sold off. And then finally, we're going to take a look here at the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. We'll get this up here to show you, and then we'll be able to see what the thing was. The haircut was just fine. There were uh, It was only a four-hour wait, but uh, because we were... Uh, the first in line, when we called in, we only had to wait about 10 minutes, and everybody was using social distancing, and everything uh, was uh, just fine. So everything worked out okay. All right. Now, we are going to have tomorrow as our guest none other than Tim Boston. If you remember, Tim said the S&P was going to be trading at 2816 on uh, – no, 26.18 – on tomorrow, the 12th, is what he was looking for. Is that correct? 2816, I wrote that down. And he's right, folks. The only thing is, he's got this digit up tied down. It's going to be 2916. So anyway, listen, the reason why this is important is if you've ever read the book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator, which I've read 50 times, in the section where Old Westlake is sitting there in, in the bucket shop and they're talking and a guy comes in and Old Westlake says, hey, guys, we got to buy Connecticut stock deal. He says, it's going to go up. And and the guy says, okay, okay, it looks good. And so he leaves. And, and the guy said, he said, you know, that's something that old Westlake, he's never right. He's never given us a good tip. And Livermore turns to his friend and says, are you kidding me? He's 100% right all the time. So just because someone says something doesn't mean that it's not true. So you got to remember what he said, 2625. That's right. It was I thought it was 2615. Anyway, but the thing that uh, we're looking at here is that uh, is all the things that are happening in the sky, boys and girls. We've got some major stuff out there. I mean, it's really big. Now I'm going to give you my two cents worth and then we'll move on to the next one here. I wanted to show you something here. This is what uh, this is the type of pattern that uh, lit up my tree back in 1986 when Dr. Miller starts, you know, making me look at astrology, which I, uh, she drugged me in it, uh, kicking and screaming, but it changed my life. Unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm far enough, I'm too far away from understanding it that I, I rely on other people, which is good because, you know, they're a lot smarter than me. That's why we have Shane on the line, why we have Archer on the line, you know, why we have Tim Boss coming on, Bill Meridian. All these guys are really good with this stuff, but I keep it as simple as possible. You'll notice that this was March the 5th of 2009. You see how all the planets are lined up? In, in one house or two houses, that, that's very, very unusual. Usually they're, they're spread out all over. You know, they're just all around the thing. You can't make any sense out of it. This is what they call a natal chart. And so I don't even know what that means. But anyway, you'll notice that they're all coming together like this. Now, when I got started doing the astrology stuff, uh, the first thing she showed me was 1974, because that was the biggest bottom in the stock market since 1932. And the, the stocks have dropped from 1972 into 1974. It was an 18-year bear market ending in the, the bear crash of um, October of 74, which I was able to learn a lot and uh, unfortunately cost a lot. 
and I learned a lot, and it was worth every penny. But this was what was going on in, in 1974. We had the same type of similarity here in October. But then, again, because of these, these planets moving into retrograde, this same cycle reappeared on uh, October, on December of 1974. And lo and behold, what happened? We had our first bottom in October, our second bottom in December. They were both double bottoms. Well, now, now we're in 1986, and I'm down in Sarasota looking at all these numbers. I said, well, this must mean something. So let's uh, let's see what we can do with these numbers. So when I, when I look at these cycles like this, all I'm saying is there must be something happening here. It's far above my pay grade, but believe me, folks, it's worth looking at because uh, it's very, very important the, because these things lack. Now, here's why I'm, I'm bringing this to your attention. Here's where we are today. Let's get this up here. Now, this is not as nearly as clear as the other one, but it's still clear in my opinion because there's so many things happening. Look how everything is in one half of the natal chart. There's nothing on the bottom half. That never happens. Well, not never, but you hardly ever see this. So this is a big deal that's going on. You look up at the left, up there at the level, uh, at the date up there, May 11th, 2020. This is a big deal. I don't know how big a deal, but it's a big deal. Now, one of the things you do as a market technician is that you rely on market feedback. In other words, you let the market tell you something, some things that are happening. Like if, uh, let, let me give you the, the, the most amazing one of all. Let, let's just get this one up here. And that is, uh, the, I always like to bring this to your attention here. This is a, a FANG stock, but this is what we call market feedback. Let me just get this up here. Now here's, here is Netflix. I want you to go to the far left part of the chart in January of last year. Not la not last year, 2018. Look at this. You see the Dow is down over 600 points on that day, and Netflix is up. Are you kidding me? Do you know how much buying that takes to keep that stock up with the Dow down 600 points? A lot. And that's market feedback that, you know, that somebody's really bullish on this stock. In 2000, or excuse me, in 1987, during the October crash, there were, uh, I believe, on that day, there were there were 13 stocks that were up on that day. 13 out of uh, 1,500, and uh, you, you, all you had to do is go back and look at what those 15 stocks did, and you'll see that, gee, somebody knew something. If you're willing to buy something when the the market is uh, having its worst day ever, they know something that you don't know, and that's direct market feedback, and that you can use that. Because if a market looks like it's going to make a new high and it doesn't, and all the news is bullish, be very careful. And uh, if it's bearish and the market's not making new lows, be very, very careful. That's direct market feedback. So that's what we're looking at today, folks. We're seeing direct market feedback. I know there's a lot of stuff out there, especially with the coronavirus. And, oh, my God, I've never seen so much uh, – information out there. I mean, you get one expert coming on saying, ah, this is no big deal. You get the next expert on saying, oh, well, this is the bubonic plague. So it's probably somewhere in between, but we don't know what that's going to be. Now, let's take a look at the main chart that I'm watching for today. Hold on one second here. I want to bring it up here because it was a very, very important. Those of you that get the newsletter I think you'll be able to uh, remember this without too much trouble. But I'll post it here, and uh, this is where we are here. We'll get it up here. One second. And there you are. This is the NASDAQ 4-Hour. We'll discuss this when we get right back. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, let's take a look at this NASDAQ chart that I put up here for you to take a look at. It's a four-hour chart, of course. You'll see that there's a three-drive to a top pattern. You have drive one way back on the 16th of April. you got the drive two excuse me, on the 30th of uh, April, and you have drive three coming in today. That number was 9271, and I believe the high on the NASDAQ was 9278. And, no, 9281, I believe. I, I was watching it happen when it happened. You can see that it was around uh, 10 o'clock, 10 or 11, yeah, it's around 1030 uh, Eastern time last night. And I made a little video of the NASDAQ and a little video of the S&P as it was happening. The S&P was doing exactly the same thing, but the S&P was making a 78% retracement. Now, that to me meant that was very important because that was direct market feedback that it was a NASDAQ that was making the market move. And because it has, um, you know, these 20 stocks that are in that NASDAQ can make the whole thing run. So you've got that, that one index, the NASDAQ, because of the high tech stocks with Apple and Google and Netflix and all the others, it makes the thing skewed. So it's not a really fair idea of what's happening uh, with the distribution. And one of the things that I did when I was looking at the newsletter was to want to see, you know, what was happening with some of these other indices that we were looking at to give you an idea whether it was going to be, you know, very, very uh, similar or it was not. And that's really what you're trying to do with direct market feedback. And if we took a look at the Russell, and which was the second largest after the E-mini S&P, you'll be able to see that it also was just just barely making a 50% retracement, and it wasn't even approaching the highs of the previous day. So that's what we're looking at. Um, okay, let's move on here to why. Well, when I sent that out, I said, look, if it's any good, you're not going to see a high of, uh, you're not going to get above 29.52, I believe. We were trading at 29.44 at that time, and then a few minutes later, not, not much, maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, the market started down a little bit. Now, whether this is a major top or not, folks, I don't know. But when you're doing pattern recognition, what you do is you've got something that says, look, this is what should happen. It might not happen, but this is what should happen. 
happen. And you know that the probability is on your side. You know that the risk-reward ratio is on your side. And since you don't know the outcome, which nobody knows that, you know, it gives you a place where you have best risk control you can possibly get. And that's what we're watching. Now, last night, the same thing was happening in the gold market. Let's take a quick look here because I want to move this over a little bit and I get this up here. You'll be able to see here, this is the uh, hourly chart on gold. You notice we made a 78% uh, retracement back on the 6th. We rallied up, made the big ABCD on Friday. We came last night, we went exactly to the 78% level of the low on the 6th, and now we've had a rally of about $15. As long as we don't go, low, go below 16.95, gold is starting to look bullish. The open interest is starting to increase. And uh, that's a good thing because we had a big increase in open interest on Thursday and Friday in the gold. And they're switching now. You're, you should move your operation over to the August gold because June is going to be coming into delivery. And we have a caller in today from Niagara Falls. Mike, are you there? Yes, good morning there, Larry. Uh, good well, morning. a very expensive taco stand. It's called Chipotle uh, Mexican Grill. Chipotle Mexican Grill. You know, Mike, I, I look at I uh, I went there once and I didn't like it. I never went back. And I love Mexican food. Living here, you know, in uh, in Tucson. But let me get this up here. I think it's CMG. Is that the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that the? Yes. Give me one second here. I think I have got this thing up here. These yeah, here fast it is. Talks, they normally like to go to round numbers when they top out. Like for example, Shopify <laughs> last week topped out just above a thousand dollars Canadian. Okay. <laughs> And then it went, then it sold off and it sideways down. Okay. And then the Canadian newspapers, all the media, uh, jumped on board and, and they hyped Shopify. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I see a very similar scenario here with CMG, with the restaurants now opening up and you've got a top tick coming soon. And the logical thing, the logical thing to think about is that it's, it's got to take out the previous high from February. Okay, mm -hmm. so maybe a round number, a thousand. Like, what, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, well. You're, it's trading at 925, so you're 75 bucks away. What I would do, if this is what you want to do, and it doesn't, it doesn't give me any patterns here to look at, and um, so I, I would wait for the market to see if it makes a double top, because if it does and doesn't run much higher than the old high, that tells you you're into really strong resistance. So there, you know exactly where you are. But right now, you're 75, you're about, well, about 75 bucks away from that old high, and that's too much to risk. You're talking about eight percent, and I think. It's too much, but if you get to a thousand, that's when yeah. you really start watching it. Yes. Yeah, to, to a round number. I was looking to short on a round number and probably some positive news or something, and uh, we go from there. Like, you know, this is what I'm thinking. But, like, uh, like I gotta be honest with you. I think they're gonna go sideways to up in the markets into end of May, uh, right after that Memorial Day, because there's, there's there's fun buying in the last week of May. Okay, and into early June, and then that's it. Then we go. Then we head south. That could 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 easily happen. I agree with you, but the round numbers are good. You know, uh, uh, Jesse Livermore worked on round numbers quite a bit, as did W. D. Gann. So you've got the right idea, but you got to wait that last twenty five dollars. Here, it's pretty yeah. tough. You got to sit on your hands. That's right. Okay, yeah. Larry, take care. Bye bye. Hey, thanks for calling in, Mike. Okay, folks, we'll move on here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that gold market. What I want to do is uh, get this chart up here of the dollar Japanese yen versus the gold, and I want to show you the relationship that we see here. Now, the gold line, of course, is the gold price. The candlestick is the dollar yen. And right now, we're sitting at a spot where the dollar should start increasing to the Japanese yen. So my, my feeling is, uh, if you see the gold price is very similar to this, we made a nice little 135 pattern in a gold so it looks like as long as gold can stay above you know 1695 we've got a chance for gold to rally and the Japanese yen to lose to the US dollar now if that's going to happen we'll have to wait and see now uh, Paul Tudor Jones I don't I uh, folks, I never read fundamental information except when it's from someone who I really expect. And Paul Tudor Jones has written something with one of his associates about what's going on with the credit markets and stuff. And I 
I don't have that anymore. It was sent to me by uh, Rich Anderson, and for some reason it's on my computer somewhere, but I can't find it. I'm going to try to get Rich to uh, remind. If any of you guys seen that, put it in there, please. It was done over the weekend, and he basically talks about what the credit markets are doing because of this and the two different scenarios that are happening. One scenario is we're going to have big deflation and a depression. The second scenario is we're going to have hyperinflation and we're going to go in, you know, to a Japanese type of economy where the government basically takes over all the bonds and stuff. And, uh, you know, we go in to live in Camelot till something else comes along, you know, to... Uh, to shake the tree. I, I don't know which one it is. I'm not smart enough to figure that stuff out, but it was a very good presentation. He had some tremendous charts of uh, you know what he thought was happening, and this is the, the main one that I'd like to bring to your attention, and then we'll talk about it when he gets back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archive subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, someone's asked a question about this having thing that's going on with uh, the Bitcoin. Uh, basically, what it means is uh, the number of Bitcoins that are going to be available are cut in half.
Uh, this happens. It happens about every four years. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I believe the maximum number of bitcoins that are mail- available in the world are 21 million. I believe something like that, and that's being cut in half. It happens again at 2024. Now I posted a monthly chart going back to 2012, and you'll notice here when we're watching this, you'll see that the uh, the Bitcoin uh, halved in the far left. You'll see a little tiny blue box there. That's when it halved the first time. And in the middle, you'll see another one. That was around uh, 2016. It halved again, and it's halving again today. Look at this long consolidation that we're having, folks, between uh, when we made 20000 and then when we came down. Now, this is a log chart, so you can see that it's still in a very bull market. Um, this, this thing with uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, blockchains and stuff, it's here to stay. Uh, people that are really smart people like J.P. Morgan and even Paul Tudor Jones are getting into this. So we want to sort of pay attention to what's happening. But that's what that having means. The question is, I'm not sure if it's like a like a stock split, but I do believe that it's something similar to that. But it's taken off the market. Uh, you know, you, there's not going to be any more until 2024. So that's uh, what it looks like. Now, there's thousands of, you know, bitcoins and crypto Bitcoin type pro- products out there, these other cryptocurrencies, and they all have different abilities to do certain things, and that's the one where it makes it difficult. When I do the one day uh, seminar uh, or the for you folks, I'm going to cover a whole section on that for about a half an hour with the help of uh, John Jameson, who understands this uh, a lot more than me. So that's uh, primarily what we're looking at. I think the main thing to focus on today, folks, is we've got this really strong uh, cycle phenomenon with these three major planets are in retrograde motion. We had Norm Winsky on last week talking about it. The week before, we had Tim Boss talking about it. Yeah, Bill Meridian talked about it. So, uh, Arch Crawford talked about it. So, it's something uh, to pay attention to. And believe me, that I'm just paying attention to it. It may or may not you know, be any, uh, be any, you know, be any good. I don't know. But look, you just look here. This is a, um, this is a Bradley model that someone did it on the internet that's uh, I'll have the Bradley model up and running pretty soon. I have it up and running now, just a second. You'll notice here, uh, this was March 17th, May 11th. This was the uh, uh, key Bradley date, and this is where I think we had a little bottom in gold. I'm not sure, but we'll have to wait and see, but we'll keep a close eye on that. And I do have the Bradley model here. If I can just remember where I put that son of a gun. I think this is it. Oh dear, oh dear, dear. I looked at this and I said, you know, we've got to we've got to talk about this a little bit. No, that's not it. Oh dear, what happened to it? Well, it's disappeared on me again. I have a disappearing screenshots, I guess. Let's take a quick look here at the uh, the Bitcoin here, and I want to show you because we backed off a thousand bucks. Hey, folks, when you're moving ten thousand bucks, a thousand bucks isn't uh, isn't very far. But uh, we went above ten thousand, and now we're back below. Uh, just we're back just a tiny bit below nine thousand right now, and so it's uh, it's it's that's normal just to see a correction. You had the beautiful three drive to a bottom there at four th- thirty nine hundred, and we rallied up to ten thousand. The stock still looks bullish. But you know, it may or may not mean anything. The thing with the the Bitcoin and the uh, cryptocurrencies and all that stuff is all related to the 5G, and I understand just about as much as I understand uh, with 5G as do the other. I'm just looking at other things. I'm watching these things for trading purposes. I don't know anything about them as far as investment stuff. It's just not worth it. Now. One of the things that Paul Tudor Jones mentioned in his uh, in his letter was the fact that uh, you can see uh, since we're getting into debt, and this is it used to mean debt was you know pretty bad, but anyway now it, it's not so bad. But you'll notice here the U.S. federal debt held by the public, you know this is going back to the the start of our country back in you know 1776. You can see the big spike after World War II, and now you can see where we are now. We're higher than that. And you can see the U.S. economy-wide debt is uh, pretty high, and uh, that's usually uh, a bad thing. So it doesn't always mean that, but that's usually what it means. 
Uh, yes, I am going to a restaurant today. We have opened up and they have social distancing, but uh, my favorite steak place here in Tucson, the old Cowtown Steakhouse, where they have chicken fried steak as good as it gets. And today, that is what I'm going to take the little princess to. She said she would rather do that than to go out for Mother's Day. So by golly, that's what we're going to do. Folks, I have a, I have a really good story for you. you know, when you get to be old, well, I'm not old. I'm on the eighth furlough. I'm still. I got another furlong and a half to go. It is uh, I made so many friends over the years when I've been in this business, and many of them you know, from back in the Drexel days. I got a phone. I'm sitting here Saturday morning. I'm doing my charts, and the phone rings, and I look at the the uh, the, the dialer thing, and it says, you know, it says Maury was I, Maury Feldman was calling. I haven't talked to him in 15 years. He was one of my customers, and so I. Call, you know, I answered the phone and I said, Maury, how are you? He says, yeah, good. He said, well, it's every 15, 10 to 15 years we always chat. And he he owned the best business in the possible you could ever be in, folks. It's a junkyard business. He owned the largest junkyard in Orange County. He owned the largest junkyard in L- L.A. County. This was when I was working with him when I was at Drexel. Folks, that is the best business of the world because they pay you, the, the, the city pays him $200 to every time he goes up on the freeway and has to take a car off the freeway. After 30 days, he owns that car. And uh, it's just amazing, the parts and how well it's run. It's run like a Swiss watch. They break these cars down. Uh, he has about 95% of all of his uh, employees are uh, from Mexico because these guys are really good with cars. They can do almost anything with them. And so he uh, that's what he does for a living. Well, he wanted to buy some, uh, wanted to buy some gold and... Uh, I said, well, you know, he's he's about my age, so I don't know why he's buying gold now, but he's he's done extremely well. Business is still moving, and he's uh, he's doing pretty good. But uh, he wanted to buy some gold, so I said, well, you know, I I can just put you in touch with uh, you know one of the guys I dealt with, which was Leroy Linhart. He's the only one that's still alive. Steve Deeds is gone, and Bob Gilmillion is gone, and uh, uh, Alan Van Fleet is gone. All those guys that I used to deal with, uh, they're not there, but uh, but but uh, Leroy is, and so I said, give Leroy a call. So I gave him Leroy's home number, and uh, so you know Leroy uh, calls me back, and he says, "That guy for real?" And I said, "Yeah, he's for real." I said, "He's a, he's a he's a straight shooter." He said, "Well, he wants to buy a lot of gold," and I said, "He's good for it." And I said, "Don't don't worry about it. He's a good guy. You know, run a run a credit check on him. You'll see." And he said, "Okay." So he's going to do this, and so uh, Maury calls me back a little bit later. He said, hey, "I want to pay you a commission for this." I said, "No way." I said, "I I said I just told you who to call." I said, "I want a commission for this," and I asked him. I said, "Are you still making these cars?" And what he would do is these kids would take these cars in the junkyard, one that was really hit really badly, and they're called uh, salvage cars. And on the title, it'll say salvage automobile. It has to tell everybody that this has been in a terrible accident, a fire, whatever. But they would rebuild these cars just like they were new. And they got about three grand in them, I guess. But they really build a really nice little car. I would easily drive one of those because they're really pretty good. Well, Oh, shucks. I waste too much time doing this stuff. Anyway, I'll tell you at the break here. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to 75000 The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metals sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, let's take a look at this Bitcoin chart and gold chart that Paul Tudor Jones had in his letter. Um, it basically shows the similarities in patterns. That's all it shows, folks. It's hard to extrapolate anything off of this. I I know that the patterns look the same, but um, that's what it's there for is to say, yeah, this pattern does. They could have used Swiss cheese or something, but uh, that's what he's looking at. And that's when you're doing patterns. What you have to do is you have to decide, you know, which pattern you're looking at, whether it's a three drop a 135, a Gartley, a butterfly, head and shoulders, whatever it happens to be, that's what d defines what the pattern is. And from that level, you have to pick yourself a spot where it's going to be, you know, hopefully uh, in your favor. And that's really what you're going to do. Uh, another one of the charts that uh, Rich sent to us is about this uh, from Elliott Wave. It just shows the deflation that's going on in some of the things that have been happening. As you can see here, that uh, this thing has been in a really big, big down move here. Every single thing, sugar, cocoa, soybeans, rubber, you know, of course, crude oil went minus, uh, cotton, lumber, corn, you know, lean hogs, and uh, also, uh, you know, sugar. So those are the ones that tells you the market is still doing it. Now, I, I'm not... <sighs> I don't know what this thing is, that what it's happened, but you realize that they have shut down the world in 30 days. Basically, from um, January to February, they started shutting down the world, and they've been able to do that. I can't believe it's been seven weeks since we've been here in the house, and uh, it, it's really it's really quite amazing. Now, one thing that I think is also important to look at is, since we're looking at similarities of charts, uh, this is the chart, and I'm going to bring this up here to take a look at it, and I don't know if it means anything or not. I'm just going to give you your 10 cents worth. You'll see here that uh, this is uh, the chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You notice that it topped on September the 3rd of 1929. It went down into November the 11th and it rallied up into April 1st to almost an exact 61% retracement. We got to 59.9. And then from there, we went down into uh, July of. Uh, uh, I believe 1932 when we made a bottom at uh, at 41. But you know that they had a really big rally here uh, from the 11th of October. That's when the actual actual end of the crash was not not October 29th. It was uh, it was a week later, two weeks later on on October on November the the 13th. From there we rallied up into April 1st. Almost again, another 50%, uh, almost a perfect 61% retracement. And I think this pattern looks very similar 
to uh, what we just did now in the New York Stock Exchange Index and the uh, the S and P 500 because the S and P 500 cash never got above that uh, 295 level, and so that's why I was looking at those divergences last night and saying, well, maybe this will work, maybe it doesn't. But when you look down at that hourly chart, you know it tells you, my goodness, you don't have to risk very much from that level. And then when it starts to work, that gives you a pretty good idea that yeah, maybe this will work, maybe it won't. So that's direct market feedback, folks. I, uh, I, when I start listening to all the all the news, if you listen to what's going on with this uh, with this virus thing, it's just totally amazing. I mean, it's just uh, it actually blows your mind away that you're looking at something that could be uh, as crazy as that is, and yet uh, that's what we're watching. It's just very, 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 very tough. Now, let's take a quick look here at you'll see here what we're looking at here when we look at the transportation index, which has just gotten massacred, and of course there's no high tech stuff in there, you know that uh, this is an Elliott Wave interpretation, and uh, they think that this could be a possible big uh, move. And, of course, when the transportations come down, they have not even ma they made an ABCD pattern in the transportations, but they have not been able to um, make it any higher than the 0 0.382, whereas the NASDAQ gave, came back 86%. The S&P got back a little above 61%. The Dow Jones just barely made the 61% retracement. But the transportations, which is, you know, trains, planes, and automobiles, well, not planes, or not automobiles, but it's how they move the goods. It only made a 382 retracement. Folks, I'm just trying to put a little common sense in here. When you take 30 million people out of the employments, th this shakes people up. And I know it's nice of the government to give people money and stuff, but they're not going to go out there and, and uh, start hitting restaurants and movie theaters and buying clothes right away. And they've got bills to pay. Uh, one of my very dear friends here that some of you folks have come to visit, Dominic, is a, uh, he has a, you know, a whole lot of property here in Tucson, and his tenants are not able to pay their bills this month. And so what he's going to do, he's just going to say, well, I'll give them a three-month uh, moratorium. That, that's all I can do. He says, I can't evict them because they don't have any place to go and he said eventually hopefully they'll come together so he's got a period here of about three months where it's going to be difficult for him and he is a major consumer of stuff so it hits a lot of different people and so that's what we're looking at. I'll finish that story Chuck someone asked me about that anyway uh, Maureen called me back and uh, we, were, we were chatting about the kids because my kids went to his bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs when they were little and he asked me how my daughters were doing and I said fine. A few minutes later Jill called me back from, uh, from from San Luis Obispo, and she's a psychologist, and she does uh, child abuse, not child abuse, but spousal abuse. That's what her specialty is. I guess seeing her mother and I being married all those years, she had a lot of experience. Anyway, what happened was she, when she has a, a patient that has a really, really big problem and there's no way around it, she usually gives me a call, say, Dad, can you help out? And this uh, lady has a couple of kids, and uh, she didn't have a car. And so I called Maury. I said, Maury, I said, give Jill a call. I said, uh, she needs someone for a car. Maybe you could help out. And oh, an hour or so later, Jill called back and she says, my guy, she says, I can't remember that guy remembers us. And I said, well, he was, uh, he was a good friend at one time. I said, we just lost contact. She said, dad, he's sending a car up for us. Uh, one of the cars that they built, one of these salvage cars. And so it was pretty nice to be able to do that. Anyway, let's move on here to the markets, folks. The key thing is, if this market makes a new high now, after those, all all those patterns have hit it's going higher that's the bottom line and if it if it closes really badly today that means it's going down it's as simple as that you don't have to be a rocket scientist you don't have to have a phd in economics you just look at the old chart and the old chart won't lie to you if there's more buying Prices are going to go up, and if there's more selling, prices are going to go down. The Fed can do whatever they want to, but they can't hide from you. So that's the main thing. If it starts to go up, you know, there's a lot of shorts out there that have been killed. Uh, and so this is where you have to take your shot when it's up there where you don't have to risk very much. So if you're in that, uh, make sure that you lock in some profit. But uh, the ideal situation is that it closes near the low end of the range today, and that will tell you you're most probably getting ready to see a five- to seven-day correction as a minimum.
and possibly a bigger top has come in, you know, during that time. Uh, remember, we will have Tim Bost on tomorrow, so save your spoiled vegetables so we can throw it at him and make it make it fun because he's a great guy. And if you remember when he talked to us, he said, hey, this might not be uh, a low. He said it could possibly be a high. We don't know. He just said that it was going to be a very key date. And I happen to know that he was not short during that last week's rally because I follow what he was doing. So uh, this is the time where those numbers are all coming together, the patterns are coming together, and that's mother, God, and country, is they say in a trade. So if that three drive stops it, and we don't know if it gets above it, it's no good. It's that simple. If you see a, if you see a 93 print in the NASDAQ, that's no good. If you see a, a 29, uh, 50 print in the S&P, that's no good. So just remember that it's there for uh, protection. That's what stops are for. Okay, I'll cover the euro when we get back. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stock Stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. This looks bearish, folks. This means the U.S. dollar should start to rally against the other currencies. 
Uh, and the main thing I would do is to keep in mind that it's very important. It's already started to move quite a bit on the Japanese yen, but uh, it's very, very important that that euro doesn't get below 107 because below 107 sets up par, folks. That's an ABCD down there at about 99 in the euro. We haven't been down there for uh, since uh, 20, 2000. That's when my grandson was born. It was trading at around 84. So we could easily do that again. There's more Brexit stuff coming out soon. And with all the things that are happening in London, they're locked down pretty tight. Not like we are here with us loosening up. Uh, I don't know how many deaths we're going to have here, but those are going to happen. Some of them are going to happen anyway, but uh, hopefully we'll lo use a little common sense and get people back to work because there are things worse than death, folks, and poverty is one of them. So let's make sure that if you get a chance to help your neighbors that need help and also the elderly, we have a lot of elderly here uh, in Tucson and especially the area where I live. It's really strange. You know, when I moved here, they were not elderly, but now they're elderly. Boy, what 30 years does. It's very, very strange about that. So here we're doing okay. We're, we're practicing social distancing, and uh, we seem to get through it okay. Thank goodness we were able to watch all of the James Bond reruns over the weekend, which is always a favorite thing of mine to do. By the way, folks, if you're watching the, the market today, is to pay attention to the S&P 500. If we get above 29.13, that will be a sign that this possibility, it, maybe that top is no good. But right now, uh, it needs to get above 29.50 to break that three drive to a top pattern. It was just as perfect as you could possibly be with time and price. We saw it on the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange Index, the Russell. Uh, I mean, everything was there. And with those big cycles coming in, if they're working, uh, that should be topping in here today because 11 to 12 were those big cycle baits that we talked about at the beginning of the show. So remember, we're going to have Tim Bost on the show tomorrow, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. 877 927 6648.